there's no spare seats so we may as well crack on so basically did anybody actually follow me on the social networks then at all thanks very much um, so yeah it'd be great if you can give me some feedback on this session afterwards I really value what you guys think if you want me to add anything to the, the seminar because I do this every six months or take anything away that was pretty boring so any feedback you guys can give me via social media is really really appreciated so this session we're going to basically quickly go through who I am um, which might bore you a little bit but I'll tell you who I am just so you know what I do we're going to go through how you can get your business online which is the most important part of the session for you guys we're going to go um, well obviously why you need to get your business online sorry as well at the beginning and we're going to talk about there's lots of recent Google updates but we're going to go through Google Penguin in particular because that's the most important one if you get your link building strategy wrong you will get penalized heavily by Google and maybe you need to start your marketing again or buy a new website the slides from this show will be available on our website um, at the following address which is www.seodesk.co.uk forward slash startup so that's if you want to grab these slides there's some useful information on there grab those um, and they'll get emailed through to you guys so just quickly who am I so my name's James Nicholson um, I'm a director of SEO desk uh, we're a small agency based in Dorking we have currently 10 staff all based in the UK so we deal with small local businesses from plumbers to electricians right up to people in the FTSE 250 and the FTSE 100 so we work with utility warehouses our biggest client at the moment but we also work with the National Health Service as well at times so we deal with a huge spectrum of different customers and um, so we can help anyone really so the first part of this session is why is it important to get your business online and found online so lots of people at the moment are hearing lots of chat about social media and they still think social media is the absolute most important thing to focus on first social media is important for your business however you need people to find your business first and then engage with them on the social sites afterwards so the reason it's very important to get online at the moment is print media is in rapid decline does, does anyone do any magazine advertising still at the moment or has everyone given up on that but for most businesses print media, one guy at the back does but most people are not advertising in magazines online we all use search engines um, and social media daily at the moment so nine out of ten households and businesses look for products and services online which I bet every single one of you in here today has used a search engine in the last week to find a product a service or some news or other information online so that's really important to understand that nearly everybody is using the internet at the moment 95% of users um, only click on page one results so does anybody often go to page two or generally Google will find you what you need on page one so there's no reason for you to go to page two of Google therefore it's very important that your business is found on page one of Google lots of companies um, will look at competitors and if you're doing some com like looking for a very expensive product you may go a few pages back but generally you'll find what you need on page one of Google 80% of users will click on the organic results does everyone know what I mean by the organic results so organic results are the results found down the middle of the page they're not the adverts at the top or the side so if you were searching for a product or a service in Google I would imagine would everyone agree that you would search and use the results down the middle of the page most of the time as opposed to the adverts so Google's business model is based around advertising and that's make basically how they make all of their money and that is generated every time you click on an advert so there's plenty of clicks on the adverts 20% of searches but mostly we click on the organic results which are down the middle of the page so business is changing we obviously all understand now as we've made clear there that it's really important to get your business online some key stats it's important to know when you're dealing with the internet just to understand just how big the internet is so Google at the moment is still growing not as much as it did in the past but Google gets 100 billion searches every single month so it's phenomenal growth that Google's had over the last few years and it's still growing obviously not 
as much as it was, but there's 100 billion searches every single month. We all expect that to continue to grow, and the reasons for that is there's still lots of areas that we're going to get connected. So I asked earlier how many of you had a smartphone. Pretty much everybody in the audience now has a smartphone. So we have Google in our pocket. We're taking Google around with us everywhere. The next device that they feel that will be connected to our body is the watch. So Samsung launched an Android watch that wasn't very successful but at some point Apple are expected to launch a watch which could change that. So we will have emails, text messages, and searches on our wrists as well. We all now use iPads. I'm sure most people here have an iPad. So previously, people would have used their desktop or their laptop computer at home, maybe while watching TV or at a desk. Now, we take a computer to bed, a lot of people. So computers are growing and that's not gonna leave us anytime soon. TomToms, for example, they have Google local search built into the latest models of TomTom. So these 100 billion searches will continue to grow over the next few years. That equates to 3.3 billion searches in a day, which is 137 million searches every single hour. So it's a huge, huge amount of searches online every single hour. Just so you can understand how that impacts you guys as maybe having a business. So 50% of searches now have local intent behind them. And what I mean by local intent is someone that's looking for a plumber in Hackney or they're looking for a restaurant in Camden. We're now, because we're using smartphones, are generally looking for more local searches than we ever have done before. We've still got huge amounts of people looking for e-commerce transactions that are looking for laptops, they're looking for news and sports results, but local search is the biggest growth area for Google at the moment. That's used to be around 10% two to three years ago. It's now jumped up to 50%. And Alice, we expect that possibly at some point, local search could be as much as 70% of search traffic in the future due to the fact that we're going to use smartphones and smart watches and various other devices out and about. So it's important that every business now is found on Google, regardless if you're a pizza shop or if you're Amazon. 30% of searches now are done via a mobile device and this stat is, could well be out of date because that's growing very very quickly so lots of searches are done via Google on a mobile device now and that's going to keep growing um, as the years go by so we expect um, that that will probably get to 50% in the next one to two years and that will continue to grow we will continue to search for things on mobile devices moving forward 93% of those mobile searches are actually using Google. So Android devices are outselling iPhones now, um, but iPhones are very popular and iPhones, pretty much most people as a default will have Google set as their search engine. It's harder to change search engine on a mobile device than it is on a desktop. On a desktop, you physically go to a website, google.com, bing.com, um, yahoo.com, or etc. So. In, on your iPhone you have to go in the settings and you have to play around with that device to basically find to change it to Bing and people just generally don't do that they just stick with Google because they're happy with what they get. Google in the UK has uh, a 90% share of the market in America it's about 68% um, so UK based people we seem to prefer Google a lot more than Americans but Bing is coming through as well as a, as a pretty decent search engine but we're still very loyal to Google over here so 90% of searches are done on Google at the moment. I just quickly want to give a comparison so if anyone here is a Yale rep don't shoot me but I just want to give a comparison does any, does any business here advertise with Yale.com still? Are you very wealthy? <laughs> but. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. So Yale.com at the moment gets um, 400,000 searches in a day. So remember Google got 137 million, although the Google stat is worldwide, there's only 400,000 searches on Yale.com every day. And that's declining, so they're in a declining market. They've been hit very hard with Google's recent updates, Panda and Penguin. So Yale is not visible in the search engine as much as it used to be in, in times gone by. Yale's traffic is declining at the moment by 30% year on year and that is a, a fact. Um, you can look at the Guardian website and it will give you information because they're a public listed company they have to provide this information to their shareholders. So if you're contemplating Yale over some sort of Google service, forget about it. If 
you've got Google sorted and you want some more business, maybe you will get something from Yelp. Yelp does work for some businesses still. So when we're talking about the organic results, we're talking about in the red box there, just so it's really clear where you're gonna get ranked. So can you see the organic result is down the middle of the page there. That's where 80% of you guys will click when you're looking for a product or service. And that's where, as a search engine optimization company, we would aim to get you or you would get yourself. So we're gonna run through some quick tips. These tips are things that you can take away and do to your own site. Um, or you could get your web design company to potentially do to your site as well. You don't have to use my agency or any other agency. So they're worth noting down or grabbing a copy of the slides um, at the end. So the various stages of on-page optimization. The first part is meta tags. Now these used to be very important to the search engines. Years ago, a meta tag, which is a where you put your meta keywords, is hidden in the website code. And Yahoo, AltaVista, and all the historic engines used to use that to rank sites. And then we would all spam that. So people like me, other search engine optimization companies as well, we would spam that with keywords to get you to rank for crazy keywords that would get traffic. So previously, Britney Spears was very popular when the internet first came out. You might have a plumbing company, and we'd think, well, if we get you ranking for Britney Spears, somebody is gonna want a plumber at that time so let's chuck a load of Britney Spears keywords in there so Google got smart it's worth filling in the meta uh, the meta tags but they're not really important anymore but it's good housekeeping to have them right meta description is the sentence that you see under the blue headline bar in the search engines so that's a call to action that's your opportunity to sell your business and encourage somebody to click through to your site so it's important that you put a good meta description in there that has a call to action that will get somebody to click through to your site and potentially buy your product or your service. Keyword density. So when you identify what you want to rank for, you need to aim at having less than 5% keyword density with that key phrase. So if you want to rank for plumber in Hackney, you need to make sure the whole keyword density on that page is no more than 5%, otherwise you're spamming the search engine. So if you keep writing Plumber Hack Me over and over and over on that page, Google will get tired of it and they will basically penalize you for that. So it's important that you don't do that. Alt tags. An alt tag is something you can add to an image. Their primary role is for blind people who use the internet. So when they use the internet, their software can tell them what the image is. It's there to describe what that image is about. Because you imagine if you're Google or any software, you cannot describe an image. So the developer would put a description into that alt tag to describe what that image is about. The search engines will look at that as well because effectively they're blind. When they're going to see images on your website, they cannot understand what that image is. So you should name the image correctly as in the file name, but also if you add an alt tag, you're helping the search engine understand what that's about. And if you do that, you've got a chance of coming up in the Google image search as well. So it's a way for Google to understand what you guys do. Title tags. So title tags, we would use, we used to stuff keywords in there. So if you're a plumber hackney, I seem to love plumbers in hackney, but you'd have plumber hackney, plumbers hackney, plumbing services hackney. We would just stuff all of those keywords and they'd be brilliant. You'd rank really highly on Google and that's all that mattered because you'd get some calls. Google got wise to that. That is absolutely useless for a user. So now we need to rewrite those and we'll show you that in a second. So they're useful for the user firstly, but also the search engine as well is not going to see you as spamming their engine. So meta tags, also known as meta keywords, are short punchy keywords separated by a comma. So if we wanted to rank for Plumber London, we would put something along the lines of John Smith Plumbers, comma, Plumber London, comma, Plumbing in London. So then we're gonna rank hopefully for John Smith Plumbers, we're gonna rank for Plumber London, and we're gonna rank for Plumbing in London. So that's telling the search engines, but remember this is not as important as it used to be. So Google has diluted the importance of that now. But it's still good housekeeping, as we said, to put that in. It's important where you get the comma. Lots of basic web companies will make the mistake. They will put plumber, comma, London. That is telling Google that you want to rank for plumber and the word London. 
So you need to get a phrase in there. That's the important part of that. And no more than five or six phrases per page. So the meta keywords or meta tags are per page. Every single page should have unique meta tags and meta keywords. So your contact us page, you would put SEO desk, SEO desk address, SEO desk postcode, SEO desk phone number, along those lines that you think people might search to validly come up on that page. It's important as well to get your brand name into these meta tags and meta keywords as well. So get your brand name in there. Although they're not as important, you should still have your brand name in there so you're just not pumping keywords down Google's throat because they'll get sick of that now. So your meta description, this is your opportunity to get someone to click on your site. So if your search engine optimization company or yourself, if you get yourself rank, ranked for Plumber London, there's 10 organic results down that middle of that, of that page generally. So you need something that's gonna make you stand out on that page, it's gonna get someone to click through to your site. In future algorithms, Google has said that the sites that get the most clicks, the biggest click through rate, quite rightly may rank higher in the search engine results in the future also google has personalized search now so probably everyone in this room has a google product of some sort you may have youtube you may have google plus you may have google analytics or you may have gmail if you're signed into one of those services and then you do a search on google whichever site you click on in the search results the next time you do the same search or a similar search will naturally rank higher up just for you on what's called personalized search. So that's why it's important to get somebody to click through to your website. So you need something that's engaging, encouraging them to want to visit your site that also includes your key phrases that you want to rank for, but it needs to be creatively written. So along the lines of John, Sm John Smith Plumber, are a family-based firm in London. We cover all plumbing services in the London area. So in there, we've got the word plumber, we've got the word plumbing services, and we've got the word London. So we've covered effectively three or four keyword combinations there, but we're not spamming Google. So it seems natural, it seems like a natural thing. We could have maybe put click here or something that's gonna encourage someone to, to visit that page. You just need to be creative on that. So. The next stage is the title tag. So the title tag is the blue tag. Can everyone see the blue line, which is the actual bit that you click on to get to the actual website that you're gonna end up on. So previously, you can see an example here, the company that's shown there, they've got a spammy title tag in this particular slide. So they've got plumber, plumbers London, dash plumbing services London, dash plumber in London. That's the old school way that we would have done the title tag and every SEO company up until about a year and a half ago would have done it that way. Now it needs to be natural. So again, you've got an opportunity to encourage a click. That's the most important thing. It needs to be truthful. It needs to be about what your business is about and what the page is that they're gonna land on. So if you have a plumbing company and you're based all over London, you'll be better to have individual landing pages for Hackney, Camden, wherever, that's really focused. And the person, if they click on it and it says plumber in Hackney, they're gonna to come to a page that's talking about plumbing, plumbing services, you being the best plumber in the Hackney area. So it, it's really important, again, on the title tag, if this was your contact us page, we would have SEO desk contact us, here you'll find our address and phone number or, some, or something along those lines that gives people an idea and that's what they were looking for, so that's what they're gonna end up on if they get that, that page. So, if we were John Smith Plumbers, you might put John Smith Plumbers dash your family plumbing firm based in London. It's just telling people, again, we've got the word plumbing in there, we've got London in there, and we've got plumbers in there as well. It's also got our company name. So in these title tags now, it's more important than ever to get your company and business name in there as well. Don't just stuff it with key phrases that you want to rank for. That's really important. So after that, that's basic on-page optimization. We don't have a long enough session to go through um, the full on-page optimization that, that can be done. But after that, you can look at things like sitemap. Um, you can look at making sure your website's verified with Google Webmaster Tools and everything's crawled properly and other diagnostics and just checking that the site's really clean and working well. 
So after that, that's you telling Google, right, come look at me, I'm a plumber in Hackney. And Google cares about that much about what you say. They really, really don't care about your business. All Google cares about is giving its users the best result so we are going to stay using Google and not disappear to Bing the next day. So that's really important to, to understand. Google does not care about your business. It cares about its users, and rightly so. Why should it care about you? Who are you? They don't know who you are. So after that, you need a voice. You need other people singing that you are the best plumber in Hackney. So we've told Google that we're a plumber in Hackney by building our page correctly by their guidelines. We then need some people to shout about it. So the next part of search engine optimization is link building. And what we're talking about when we say link building is linking from external sites to your site. So if you think of a link as a vote, so it's kind of like a vote of confidence. So we're going to go on through some link building tactics now. Um, when you do link building, you need to be very sure that the quality of the link is very important or you will get hit by updates, which we're going to talk about the Penguin update after this slide. So it's still the most important factor in the Google algorithm, it, link building. The first thing that they're looking at is social media. So they're looking, is your site alive? Is your brand alive? There's thousands and thousands and thousands of websites, probably millions of websites worldwide that either are not trading anymore, the company's gone bust or whatever. They may have paid their hosting for the year on January the 1st and gone bust on January the 2nd. So Google needs to see like a pulse. It needs to understand that you're alive and the social network shows Google that your business is alive. So if they see updates on your Facebook, updates on your Google+, Plus, activity on Twitter, people pointing links to you, it's effectively a pulse. So it gives about 5% um, towards the ranking algorithm at the moment, but we expect that to grow. So at the moment, it's 5% importance to that ranking algorithm, but that will definitely grow in the future. The biggest one to get involved in is Google+, Plus because it's Google's own social media site. It's not as successful as they would hope. They've got about 300 million users, I think was the last time I heard a stat banded around. It's a bit like a ghost town, but if you use it, Google will reward you. So get active on Google+. Plus. You can use tools like Hootsuite, which will allow you to update all of your social networks at the same time, so you don't have to put more effort into that. Press releases. Matt Cutts, I hate him absolutely hate him and Josh probably doesn't like him too much either. Matt Cutts is the main guy that decides how the algorithm works at Google. He's in charge of what's called the web spam team. He did a video and basically said press releases are useless. They don't work in ranking any site online. That's actually not quite true. Google was referring to press release sites that don't charge you. So a year ago, or still now, there's loads of websites that you can just chuck a press release on and it will cost you nothing to put it on there. And what that means is there's no editorial guidelines or quality. No human has inspected that. And what you'll generally find is all the press releases are about Viagra, casinos, or adult sites. There'll be absolute total spam. We ourselves use um, PR Web, which we find is useful. Google doesn't follow the links. On, on there, but it just shows that you've got an active business. So Google understands you need to promote, promote your business online, and it understands the media is an important source. So if you put your um, website as a, and a press release onto PR Web, the press release is not going to have a massive impact on your ranking, but it shows that you've got some no-follow links, and the no-follow is telling Google that don't expect this link to massively impact my ranking but it's natural so you need some of those links anyway and also journalists read PR web so you could get picked up and featured in the independent or any other online place so they are a useful way to get links to your site directory submissions and this was absolutely hammered by the penguin update so directories are a great way to get links to your site so lots of clever webmasters thought right so I'm gonna build a directory and I'm going to charge an SEO company one pound to put a link in it. And all the SEO companies, like sheep, we all ran towards these directories and paid a pound and put a link in. It was brilliant and everyone ranked from that. Google, with the Penguin update, hit those. So there's lots of really poor quality directories out there that didn't cost any money. So we now call in-house directories a more 
called citations. So Google is still looking, again, to see that you're a real business, you're really trading, and that you're alive. So we will list our clients in directories along the lines of Yale.com. You can have a listing in Yale for nothing, so cancel it, but you can still be in there and don't pay them. You can have a free listing. They'll tell you you'll be on page 10, who cares, you're in it. Quipe, you can list in, that's a decent directory. Trustpilot is a good one because you can get reviews on your business. There's lots of these places that you can build citations online. All of these directory listings are human edited, they're checked by humans, so Google trusts those. And it's very important on those that you match up your address and your phone number. They need to be the same address and same phone number that's on your website. So some websites will have call tracking software. That is not the phone number that you want to put into these citations because that number will change via adverts and however the traffic's driven. You need to put your real physical phone number and have that on your Contact Us page. Blogging. So building your own blog is important. If you look and you want to find some industry-related updates, if you look at the SEO desk blog, we update that on a regular basis. Now we were crit well, we weren't updating it so much, but now we're a lot more focused on getting daily updates on that blog with industry news. Yourselves, you should do that. So again, it shows that your site's fresh. Google will look at that and see fresh content. But also, we outreach to people in the blogging community that will write stories and articles about your business. So you might sell tadpoles. There's going to be a tadpole blog somewhere. It could be anything. There's loads and loads of different products and services. Every niche there is always somebody that is blogging about it. So you should outreach to those people and ask if they'll feature you and do a news story on you. That's really important and you can get good quality links from that. Articles was massively hit in the Penguin update as well. So there are some good article sites still, but again, you need to use paid article sites. You should probably check out in an SEO community if it's still an opinion that it's a good article site, because we went from about a million article sites that were good down to about five. So you need to check that those article sites are still good and valid and you have to pay to be in there. So the quality and editorial like guidelines are, are checked. Check your competitors backlink. So if somebody's ranking on page one for Plumber Hackney, you can, if you Google check my competitors backlinks, there's thousands of SEO tools that you can get an Excel sheet that will show you where they have linked to, where, sorry, where all their links are coming from. So if you do get that sheet, you can approach those customers and those places to basically talk through, um, well, getting a link on those sites yourself so you can see which directories they're in, you can see which blogs they've been featured on. So that's a great way to get a list of places to outreach to. Trade bodies and suppliers. So often e-commerce sites will sell somebody's product. So you might sell Sony's headphones. If you sell Sony's headphones, call Sony and say, can we be featured as a distributor or where to buy? That might be hard to get on the Sony website, but some of the smaller little brands that you sell will absolutely support you to the moon and back. They want you to be on their website showing that they've got more people selling their products. So ask them for a link. Social bookmarking sites, there's things like Tumblr and Dig and stuff like that. They're good places to, and Reddit are good places to, if you've got blog, uh, blog content, put it out on these social bookmarking sites and they can get you some traffic, but also they can get you some links as well. Do not Google something along the lines of best social uh, network, social media sites, sorry, to, to backlink from because the lists are all out of date and they're all ones that will get you penalized by Google. So if you think the site's active and you've heard of it, Reddit's a good one, Tumblr's a good one, and Dig are, is, is a good one as well. They're proper businesses that have been around for a long time. YouTube as well. So we have started making a lot of videos on YouTube, hence we're videoing this at the moment. And when we put our videos on YouTube, we actually, in the description box, so you've got an option to describe your video, link back to your site from there. So it's very easy to put a YouTube video out and lose that visitor. They watch your video, and then immediately after it finishes, they get bombarded with 10 or 20 other videos, and they've disappeared from your business. So if in the description on the YouTube channel, and the video you're linking to your site or the page that you're particularly talking about, Google will like that. And also, you've got that traffic driven back to your site, which is important that you don't lose that. And there's a sad little community called Demos. So these are a bunch of geeks, more, more geeky than me, and 
they own um, a directory that Google seems to love for some reason. Not, it doesn't love it as much as it used to, but it does really like links in there. So Demos is a human edited directory. You have to be very certain when you put yourself in there that you put yourself in the correct category. You get one shot to be in Demos. If you get it wrong, then they will not put you in there. And you will sit in a queue for months. So you find your, your category, Hair Salon London. You put yourself in that category then a geek is in charge of that category whenever he's like decided that he's not going to watch tv he will come online and he will decide whether you're going in there or not i'm not in there because i had a typo as i some kindly pointed out on my first slide i had a typo as well i didn't get in there because i had a typo in my listing and he sent me a very nice email back saying thanks so much you're not being um included in the directory because you had a typo do not bother replying to this email it will go into a black hole so but it's worth trying to get yourself in there so give it a go so after that link building is important so that's the most important part of why you rank online but it's very 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 important that you only build quality links so if you're looking to engage a search engine optimization company and they say for you for a hundred pounds I'm going to give you 50 links here 200 links here 50 links here you need to run a mile a year ago fine they would have been fine and they would have probably maybe ranked your business it's now all about quality of links over quantity so if you're finding sites that are saying that you can add a link to this to their directory or their site for nothing it's probably very low quality no one cares and Google will penalize you. So if Google finds that you have links from external sites that are of poor quality, the penguin here, he will come and trample on your site and you will lose your ranks. You can even lose your ranks if someone types in your own name. It's that bad. So it's really important that you do not mess this up. It's vital that you take that on board. So if anyone here is thinking, right, I'm going to go away and do my own search engine optimization, just really be careful that you're using quality links. And if you're using an agency, check them out as well. Call some of their customers, ask for references, check the results they've got. It's really, really vital that that's like, this is your business. In our experience, if you get hit by the Google Penguin update, your only option is to start a new website. Totally new content, totally new domain name. It's not worth the aggravation to try and recover the site. Google has a tool called the Google Disavow tool that will basically give you the chance to basically go crawling back to Google and say, I'm sorry, Google, here's a list of links that I built when I was naughty. If, if you could just take those off so they're not looking at my site and I'll be put back up there. 12% of people that have used the Google Disavow tool have got their ranks to return only 12 percent and it takes months absolutely months to get that sorted so it's not worth the risk so if you're doing link building you need to build quality links so the google penguin update was looking at over optimization so it's also looking at your anchor text so when you're building links if you're a plumber in hackney we would in the past have got you lots of anchor text saying plumber hackney plumbing services hackney etc now we will use your brand name. We've just done a recent study following Google Penguin Update 2.1 and it's looking like you need to have the anchor text in your links around 5% or less. Whereas prior to these updates, people had it as much as 100%. And those people have all lost their ranks now or some of them in rare occurrences will, will survive. So that's really important that you guys vary the anchor text. So when you're building a link to your site, your brand name should be your primary anchor text every time and variations on that. So for SEO desk, we'd have SEO space desk. We'd have SEO desk as one word. We'd have www.seodesk.co.uk. We'd have seodesk.co.uk, lots of variations. And then we would have search engine optimization, search engine optimization company, SEO, and various other things. And then we have internal pages that we will vary up that anchor text for as well. So garages, we'll have SEO for garages, SEO desk, garage specialist. So it's really important. And we look at around varying it between 15 to 20 different anchor texts, but massively biased towards your brand name. That's the main thing, is to get your brand name on there. 
So the way that Google then understands is the content that's put out online that you're talking in your press releases, that you're talking about the keywords in those press releases still, all those articles, all those blog projects that you're doing, but you're not linking from the keywords in there. So the article is talking about it, but you need to link with your brand name somewhere in that article. So it was also hitting um, link farms and spam networks and stuff like that. So you used to be able to Google buy link. If you Google buy links, there'll be hundreds of companies that will say they'll buy you um, 10,000 links for five quid or whatever. They are called link farms and they will absolutely destroy your business. If you ever do that, you may as well literally find the server that your website's on and burn it. Like that's about as useful as that will be. So yeah link with your brand name and important as well as get citations so directory submissions we now call citations so yell.com quite and all these review sites and stuff like that so that's important that you guys are doing that so that's it so you can grab the slides from the seminar at seodesk.co.uk forward slash startup please do give me some feedback hopefully you found something useful in this seminar please tweet at me or at the seo desk and I'll reply to every single person. Anyone that's got any questions? So, if the, the keyword density you mean at the beginning, so you've got an article, it's got 100 words in, no more than 5% of those words should be aimed at the key phrase that you're trying to target. So you need to pad it out with more content um, if you can. Yeah. I, sorry, I can't hear you. You say that the organic advertisement in the Google you come to the middle. What's yeah. the reason for it? Why is not going to the top? Um, okay. So the, qu the, the question from the gentleman there is why do the organic results appear in the middle of the page? The reason being is Google assumes that the people by putting adverts at the top of the page they're more likely to get a click. So Google is an advertising business and they want adverts but they also serve up organic results because they want to obviously give people a relevant search every time yeah oh sorry Yeah, so if an organization is looking to sell you like a bulk package of links or something like that, is that what you mean? So yeah, if somebody's looking to sell you a bulk package of links in any way, then they're going to be poor quality links and that's definitely going to get hit by a, a, by future updates. They'll be put on poor quality sites. Sorry. Yeah. So if you start up a company and your brand name isn't reflective of what they do, are you going to So. The question was, if you set up a business and your brand name is not reflective of what you do, are you a disadvantage? Not so much, like you still need to, you need, you need to be promoting the brand and building a brand. So you need to kind of almost, when you're building links now, almost forget that you're trying to rank in the search engine for it. So you're trying to brand your business and drive traffic and brand awareness to your company. So you could be at a little bit of a disadvantage. If you've got some crazy name, then yes. Yeah, like Amazon's a, a rainforest, so yeah, but uh, they're too big for that to matter. The rainforest but Wikipedia yeah. thing would probably be right down the page. It would always bring up the e-commerce site first just cause, because of who they are. Yeah, sorry. Did you have a question? Okay. Any other questions? No? Thanks.